name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A very cold but warm welcome to you this fine morning in December as we gather on this second Sunday of Advent. Please be seated for the notices. Apologies for the chill. We had a slight leak in the hall, which meant we had to turn all the water off in church, uh, when in the complex, uh, and therefore the heating is not allowed to be on either. So um, if you are feeling cold, please huggle up to the nearest person to you to keep warm. As a result of um, not having any water, sadly we've had to cancel messy church this afternoon. Um, so if you know anyone who was planning on coming, please do let them know there'll be no messy church this afternoon. But God willing, the, the plumbing will be fixed tomorrow and we'll be able to welcome all the schools who are doing this week and we'll be able to have our Christmas tree festival next weekend. Please do support and help as best you can. Uh, and if anyone is able to help put the trestle tables out uh, and get some Christmas tree stands down from the loft after Mass, please see me um, and we'll get you to do what is required. Next Sunday evening, we have our parish festival of nine lessons and carols, which is always spectacular. So I do encourage you to come along to the nine lessons and carols next Sunday evening at 6.30. Before that, on the Saturday, we'll do carol singing outside as part of the Christmas tree festival. Um, and if you've got thermals, it's normally a good idea to wear them out there whilst you're singing because it's pretty chilly, um, but it's a lovely community spirit. If you would like to come to the Chris Dingle services, don't forget you need tickets from our website to come to the Chris Dingle services, partly so we know how many are coming, but partly so you don't have to spend ages queuing outside to come and join those very popular services. The other ser no other Christmas services are being ticketed this year. And if you'd like to be part of the Hemel Rotary Santa sleigh in Boxmore on the 19th of December, please speak to Noel or Alan Mumford after the service for further information. We have our Advent wreath, but it's not yet, not yet lit. Um, can I have some volunteers? How about those? You, two? No. you don't want to play with fire? How about Rebecca? Do you want to light a candle? And? No, behind you. Young the young man behind you. Can you like this one, please? Thank you. Can one of you? Blow the taper out. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. People of God, be glad. Your God delights in you, giving you joy for sadness and turning the dark to light. Be strong in hope, therefore. For your God comes to save. So let us pray. God our Father, you spoke to the prophets of old of a Saviour who would bring peace. You help them to spread the joyful message of his coming kingdom. Help us as we prepare to celebrate his birth, to share with those around us the good news of your power and love. We ask this through him who is the light coming into the world, the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Turn now to our orders of service, and as God welcomes us into his presence, we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts 
by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness, and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. <coughs> Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon me. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. We hear God's word. A reading from St Paul in his first letter to the Thessalonians. Concerning the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come down upon them. As labour pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day the surprise the, to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and for those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet in the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live, live with him. Therefore, 
encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were, ba being, and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. seated. Uh, may I speak and may we all hear in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you all hear me? Yes? Great. Well, let's face it. The news from around the world right now is dire. So dire that many people are just blotting it out and rushing around like headless chickens trying to make Christmas the best they can for their spam families in spite of the cost of living crisis. The last two weeks of Advent and Christmas itself, we are told, make for one of the most emotionally highly charged periods of time in the whole year. But into this hectic atmosphere the opening verses of Mark's Gospel that we've just heard should come like a dash of clean cold water on the face and a breath of clean cold air into the lungs. I nearly started this sermon in the same way as Mike did at the All Age Eucharist last week. Do you remember what he shouted? Wakey, wakey! And the organist responded with the Billy Cotton banjo tune. Those of us who are old enough to remember enjoyed that. Well, wakey, wakey today. I didn't see many people looking excited as the gospel was read. Have we heard it so many times before that it's become a bit too familiar? 
Have we got so much on our minds that we might even have switched off for a minute? Surely not us. But wakey, wakey, says Mark. Hear my opening words again. Just hear them again. His very first sentence. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. What an opening. The very word gospel itself means good news, of course. Stupendous news. Jesus, the human face of God himself, comes into the world to heal forever the fractured relationship between God and human beings. He comes to show us how to love and forgive, to give us a fresh start every time we fail, to assure us that each one of us is unique and precious and infinitely loved, no matter what. And finally, to, sh to top it all off, to assure us that death is not the end. That must surely be the best news ever. As Mark's gospel rushes along at breakneck speed with healings, teachings and happenings, often prefaced by the word immediately, we soon come to see that Jesus is not at all how the people of his day expected the long-form Messiah to be. And we know that some reject him outright, especially the powerful religious authorities who finally have him brutally executed for blasphemy. But the ordinary folk, the outsiders, some of the thinkers, and even some of the Gentiles gradually begin to realise that he truly is from <coughs> God. And amazingly, amazingly, it's the Roman centurion actually in charge of the crucifixion who confesses as he sees the way Jesus dies, truly this was the Son of God, as Mark introduces him in the opening sentence. But before we actually meet Jesus, Mark now brings John the Baptist onto the stage. Everybody knew that before important people arrived, the victorious general, the conqueror, or whatever big cheese there was on his way, there would always be preparations to be made, and there'd be a herald sent ahead, waking them up to be ready to cheer the one who was coming. And it's still the same today, isn't it? The story goes that whenever the queen arrived anywhere, she always got a whip of new paint, and it's probably the same for her son, now the king. And of course, there's always great anticipation all whipped up. And this, metaphorically, is John the Baptist's role. 400 years previously, the prophet Isaiah had written of the time of the Messiah to come that there would be, quote, a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And going on, Isaiah says, every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places are plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken 400 years before. And all that we see fulfilled here in the ministry of John the Baptist, in preparation for the arrival of Jesus, Messiah, Son of God. Of course, John is not smoothing out the lumps and filling in the potholes, on the literal highway, but he is preparing the highway into the hearts of the people. John's is this voice, crying in the wilderness 400 years later, prepare the way of the Lord, as we just heard. And how are the people to prepare? They're to repent of their sins, and as a sign of repentance, be baptised with water in the River Jordan, as a symbolic cleansing. And there's another Old Testament prophecy that uh, the great prophet Elijah will return when the Messiah is on the way. And John himself is a quintessential Elijah figure, dressed in the same way, eating the same weird food in the wilderness, and crying out in the same way. The people will notice this and take be absolutely intrigued. And that's why they flock to hear his powerful preaching. And many respond to his call to receive baptism as a sign of their repentance. It's a time of huge expectation 
The people have been taught that the Messiah will come soon. And in their bondage to Rome, they are thirsting for it. Many of the people want to follow John and be his disciple. But he makes it crystal clear that he is just the herald. The one whose arrival he is announcing is someone much more important than him. It's the job of the lowliest servant to unfasten his master's sandals prior to washing his feet. And in saying he is unworthy to even do that for the Jesus, John is putting himself lower than the lowliest servant. And of course, three years later at the Last Supper, Jesus himself will take that lowly role, washing his disciples' feet. Everything is topsy-turvy in the kingdom of God, and most especially the human life on earth of the king himself. Do you know that piece called One Solitary Life? It sums it up so well, and here it is. He was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another obscure village where he worked in a carpenter's shop until he was 30. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never went to college. He never visited a big city. He never traveled more than 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of the things usually associated with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While dying, his executioners gambled for his clothing, the only property he had on earth. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Twenty centuries have come and gone, and today Jesus is the central figure of the human race and the leader of mankind's progress. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned put together have not affected the life of humankind on earth so much as that one solitary life. 2,000 years later, here we all are, getting ready once again with millions of others around the world to celebrate his birth. Isn't that amazing? In a week's time, we'll be holding our popular service of lessons and carols, and the week after, there'll be Chris Dingles, carols by candlelight, and midnight mass. And crowds, many of whom only come at Christmas, will come to hear the beautiful story of the baby in the manger, the shepherds, the angels, and the mysterious astrologers following a star. They'll come to be moved by the candlelight and the lovely music. And there's nothing wrong with all of that. It's a vital way into the heart. And we must welcome them warmly. But today, Mark challenges us to think further. Mark gives no stories of the birth or childhood of Jesus. He simply plunges straight in to introducing us to Jesus as the Son of God, the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies of long ago of God's promise to send the Saviour. Might we find some time, however brief, amidst all our preparations to turn and give God our full attention to thank him for his tremendous gift of himself in Jesus, to ask his help to truly prepare and open our hearts to his generous love once again this Christmas. Because yes, whatever the dire state of the world or anything else that may be troubling us personally, we will still be celebrating the very best news ever. In Mark's opening words, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen.
stand to declare our faith in the living God using the words on our hymn sheets. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Our God is always ready to hear our prayers. Let us be still and pray to him now. Father, may this season of Advent renew our hope and faith in you. May our hope be strong in the face of all that makes for despair, fear and unbelief, the cruelties that people inflict on one another. In the words of this carol, yet with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angel's strain have rolled 2,000 years of wrong, and man at war with man hears not the love song which they bring. O oh, hush the noise, ye men of strife, and hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophet bards foretold, when with the ever-circling years comes round the age of gold, when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendours fling, and the whole world give back the song which now the angels sing. We pray that the men of strife listen. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. May our trust grow stronger, Father, as we celebrate the coming of God, born as a baby in Bethlehem. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for those we see and talk to every day of the week, for those we often argue with or misunderstand for those who brighten our lives and make us smile, for a greater thankfulness and appreciation of those we normally take for granted. Lord, in your mercy, we, hear our prayer. we pray for those who will be visiting the church this week, those who come for silent prayer, those taking part in and attending carol concerts and for those setting up and visiting the Christmas Tree Festival. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for those on our newsletter who are sick or have continuing needs, for those who feel isolated and alone, for the ill, the frail, the stressed and the bitter. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for the dying and those who have died. Sheetha Henderson, Victor Porter, Mark Jefferson, and Beryl Webb. And may those who grieve be comforted. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our yes. Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand for the peace. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us, to give light to those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us wave to one another a sign of Christ's peace. I'm standing to sing our offertory hymn, Long Ago Prophets Knew.
grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now united on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord is here. up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. The night before he died, he came to suckle his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us, the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. And bring us at the last, with all the saints, to a vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and love be yours forever and ever. our Saviour has taught us, so we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Kingdom for power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
We pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise, but when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring light to others. We who the Spirit unites give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Stand to sing our final hymn, Hark a Herald Voice is Calling. 